you're out there in Toronto, and you're like, man, look at all them Americans with their cheap-ass houses. Well, buy me some of those. Make me some money, right? Make me some money. Cash in on the really low-cost real estate in the U.S., right? It's a good plan, right? But you might be thinking, what if I buy a bad house? What if I get some of them crazy friggin' lunatics in my house trashing it, this, that? How do I know exactly what a good deal is and a good deal isn't, right? I'm in freaking Canada, man. It's far. It's different, right? What do I do? How can I make the money but eliminate a lot of the risks involved with international investing? Ding, 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 ding. Obviously with me, bro. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. My name is James Wise, and I wish this was a microphone, man. I got to get me one of them old school reporter microphones or like that really like super long one that the dude on the dating game had. And he had like the little tiny thing at the top. That thing was freaking awesome. Anyway, not important. What is important is making money in real estate, making money for folks in Canada, right? A lot of folks in Canada are drawn to the cheap, 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 cheap prices in the U.S. One of those folks, my dude, Hassan. Hassan, you're out there in Toronto. You and I, we've done many videos together, bro. We've done a lot of videos, right? But what we've noticed, what I've noticed, what's happening between the two of us, right? Because this is like a give-take. It's a back-and-forth kind of deal, right? You buy a package of videos, send you a couple, you give me some feedback. We, we, we go this way. We go this way. We go this way. We try to figure out a customized plan for you, right? And what I've noticed is with some of the stuff I've sent you, you're like, oh, dude, that's a little old, that's a little rough, right? So today I want to do something a little different, right? We've been focused on getting you super low-cost stuff in America. How about today we get you something that's 50 years newer than most of those properties, a little bit more expensive, but a lot nicer. So your risk is going to be dramatically decreased. Your cost of ownership dramatically decreased, right? Let's check that out because I think diversification is very important. And when you're going international, I think it's a very good idea to keep those risks as small as possible. Let's check out the deal. Two, please. Welcome back. This, this is what you pay for, right? This is the part of the show where I earn my keep, okay? I got to present to you the numbers, the numero unos, all right? I like this house. This is B, B, B grade stuff, okay? Now, we're in the Cleveland market, right? This is a suburb called Elyria. It's about 30 minutes west of Cleveland, okay? This is a solid 1976 B-grade duplex, right? You guys, you read the ultimate guide to grading, grading Cleveland neighborhoods that I wrote, right? If you never heard of that, it's in the show notes below. Click it when you're done with the video. But not now! Don't screw up my watch time on the algorithm. I will get pissed! But when you're done, when you're done, right, check that out, and you'll see I graded everything on an A to F scale. This is a B. This is what a B-class neighborhood is going to look like, folks. A lot of owner-occupants are driving up pricing in these neighborhoods. You're going to get very, very stable tenants. As you can see, this is the vacant unit I'm cruising through. It's dated, but that's okay because we're going to fix it. That's where the bottom unit is, right? We're going to fix up the unit. My team will handle all the on-the-ground work. Man, look at this driveway. That's huge. That backyard right up to the woods there. That's very nice, right? Now, we're going to handle the renovations, right? We're going to make this house up to date, right? We're not going to get top dollar in rent with our kitchen looking like this, dude. Where is it? It came right out of the 70s. We've got a, 
upgrade this a little bit. But we don't have to redo the cabinets, though. We're just going to repaint them, and we're going to slap a new countertop on there, bring it up into the 21st century or 22nd century or wherever the hell we are. It's probably the same century. Maybe it's not because it's 2022, and this was 76, so that was technically a century. Moral of the story, we can't have it looking like your grandma's house because people ain't going to pay top dollar rent. But my team, we handle all that, so you don't have to live locally. We take care of that, right? So, simple, right? About 15 Gs. We're going to put about 15 Gs into this. And as you see there, I got a purchase price of 160 k That's what I think you're going to need to pay for this, right? As you see here, they got it listed at 179.9. My job as your advocate is to fight for you and get you that $20,000 discount. So I believe I can do so, right? Sold $200 million worth of the stuff. I know how to negotiate a real estate deal, folks. I believe I can put this together for you for 160 put 15k in reno to get that unit up to snuff, right? We're going to redo that kitchen. Okay, we're going to use some extra money, a little paint, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You will get a full line by line construction bid from Holton Weiss Contracting when the time is appropriate. More information on when that will be is in the fact on holtonweiss.com, right? So an all-in investment of 175. What are you going to get with that? Well, the unit I just talked about fixing up, we're going to rent that bad boy for 900 a month. Now, the basement unit is currently marketed, uh, I'm sorry, not marketed, below market rented. It's rented, but below market rate is what I'm trying to say, stumbling over my words. Those current tenants are paying six and a quarter. Eventually, we'll want to work them up because if they're going to live in this nice of a neighborhood, they should really be paying 800 Now, if you're wondering, same amount of bedrooms, why is the upstairs paying $100 more? Because it's the freaking upstairs. That's why. Of course you're going to pay more. It's a bigger unit. It's above ground. The other one's a garden unit. Garden is a fancy real estate term for saying it's in the fucking basement. Obviously, they're going to pay less. But 800 is still quite a bit for this market, right? So 1700 20400 for the year. If you're new to real estate, uh, you may not know this, but you don't get to keep all that twenty k, right? That's not practical. This chart, that shows you what's practical, right? These are the fixed and variable expense estimates that come along with being a real estate investor, right? If you're in a nice neighborhood like this, yeah, you don't really deal with a lot of evictions, but we got to plan for it because no investment will ever run perfectly forever. Same thing with taxes, CapEx, insurance, water, sewer, the whole shebang. It's all right there. As you can see, I believe your pure profit will be about 9 Gs a year. With your $175,000 investment, remember, that's me fighting for you as your advocate to get this $179 down to $160. Then my team handling that entire renovation for you, all in $175. You put down $65. That's going to represent $40,000 as a down payment, $15,000 for the reno. The bank will kick in the rest, 30-year note, $120K mortgage. Should all pencil out to a 5% cash-on-cash cash return. That cash on cash return does not account for your actual uh, internal rate of return when you sell it down the road, which is going to also factor in things like principal pay down and appreciation because a very, very nice neighborhood like this, okay, what happens to real estate over time if it's nice? It goes up, right? That's like kind of how the whole friggin' shebang works. Now, truth be told, though, Cleveland itself is not historically a cash flow uh, well, I should say it's historically a cash flow market. People come here for the cash flow. They don't historically come here for the appreciation. However, nice little area like this should still see some appreciation, and then you get that nice little cash flow, and you're going to own the property and have a very, very easy ownership experience, right? Do we have properties in the Cleveland market that are much cheaper than this? Absolutely. We can do like $1,500 a month for $100,000 duplexes. But you have to understand, you're going down an asset class, and now you're not getting 1976 properties that look like that. You're getting properties built in like the 20s. We can do that. We do that with a lot of stuff. Most of my personal portfolio is a lot of that lower income Section 8 type stuff. But what I think the biggest thing a lot of you need to think about is diversification, folks. If you're going to have a large portfolio, you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket, right? You want to take some of your higher-risk stuff and balance it out with super low-risk uh, low plays like this. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.